Hi friends, Allie here. In today's tutorial, we will be making the Crossroads vest. This vest features a mesh fabric that's light and perfect for summer. It works up quickly and the instructions include sizes extra small all the way up to 5X. If you're ready to get started, let's head over to our supply list. For today's tutorial, you'll need a medium four weight yarn. I'm using Circulum Natural Cotton Max Color, but you can use any yarn and fiber that you'd like. You'll also need a nine millimeter or M hook, scissors, and a yarn needle. I'm gonna put up a size chart next so you can see all of the sizes and how much yarn you're gonna need for each size. So here are all the sizes. I will be making a small, but you can follow along no matter what size you're making. I'll have all the written instructions up in the top right corner of the screen, and you'll be able to see how many stitches each row will need for each size. The number you'll see in parentheses is for extra small, then small, then medium, and so on. The length of the vest is customizable. In the tutorial, I'll be making mine mid thigh length, but you can make yours as long or as short as you'd like. If you'd like to make it a different length though, just keep in mind that the yardage may be different than what's up on the screen. Don't forget to check out the free pattern on my blog, whoshomemade.com, and you can also get the ad-free, easy-to-print PDF from my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. I'll leave links to each of those down below, and if you're ready, let's move on to our tutorial. So this vest is made up of three panels. So we have a back panel and then two identical front panels. It's worked from the bottom up and we're not going to be working a border around it at all. So for our very first row, we are going to work a foundation single crochet row and that's just gonna give our bottom edge a nice clean look. So for our foundation single crochet, we're gonna start with a slip knot Then you're going to chain two. And then working in the second chain from the hook, so the first chain that we worked, you're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on our hook. So that just created our chain. So when you work a foundation single crochet, you're working the foundation chain and the first row of single crochets together. So that is the chain and you're going to want to remember where that is because we're going to work our next foundation single crochet into it. So that's right there. Now we have to finish off our single crochet. So you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. So we just did one foundation single crochet. So now working into the chain on the bottom that we worked, we're going to insert our hook, making sure you're going through both the loops. So just like that. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook to create the chain. So again, we're going to work the next foundation single crochet into that chain. So remember where it is. If you want to use a slip stitch or sorry, a stitch marker, you can mark that chain right there if you'd like. And then we have to finish off the single crochet. So yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. So now we have two working into the last chain we worked. Insert your hook, making sure you're working through both the loops. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook to create the chain. Again, we're going to work our next foundation single crochet into that chain. Yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. So I just made a total of three. For my size, I'm making the small. I'm going to make a total of 36 foundation single crochets. So just work as many as your size calls for. And we're just going to continue that across and I'll meet you guys at the end of row one. I'll show you one more time how to do the foundation single crochet. This is a tricky stitch to get used to. So if you need to pause the video and just keep practicing, feel free to do so. And again, use a stitch marker to mark that chain space if you need to. So one more time, working into that last chain we worked, so that's here down at the bottom. Insert your hook, making sure to go through those two stitches at the bottom. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook to create the next chain. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook to create the single crochet. And just repeat for as many as your size calls for. So 
So I just finished working my foundation single crochet row. So I have a total of 36. If you did the extra small, you should have 32. If you did the medium, you should have 40 and so on. The best thing about a foundation single crochet row is that it's nice and stretchy. So the rest of this pattern is quite stretchy because of the stitches we use. So it's nice to have the foundation single crochet be just as stretchy. So we are going to now chain three and turn our work. And we're now on to row two, and this chain three at the beginning of each row does count as a stitch. So the stitch that's directly below it, that goes with the chain three. So we're not gonna be working into that stitch at all because it belongs to that chain three. So just remember that the chain three does count as a stitch and not to work into the stitch directly below it. So we're gonna be working the cross treble crochet all the way across for our piece. So the treble crochet is an extra tall stitch, which makes this a nice open and airy mesh fabric. And the cross treble crochet is essentially working one treble crochet behind another to create an X or a cross. So we're gonna be skipping that very first stitch that belongs to our chain three, that doesn't count. And then we're gonna skip the second stitch and then work our, our first treble crochet into the third stitch. So to work a treble crochet, you're gonna yarn over twice, insert your hook into the third stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the next two loops on your hook, and yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So there we have one treble crochet. And now we're gonna work our next treble crochet behind the one we just worked and into that last stitch we skipped. So we're gonna be crossing it behind. So yarn over twice, insert your hook behind the last treble crochet that we worked and into that skipped stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the next two loops on your hook, and yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So there we worked a cross treble crochet. So you can just see it makes a little cross stitch or X stitch. And now we're just gonna repeat that all the way across. So you have to skip the next available stitch and work your first treble crochet into the next stitch. So yarn over twice, insert your, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the next two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook, so there is our first treble crochet of our cross treble crochet stitch. Now working behind the last one we worked and into that skip stitch, work a another treble crochet. And there we have another cross treble crochet stitch. And now we're just gonna repeat that all the way across, making sure you skip the next stitch, work your first treble crochet into the next stitch after that, and then work the second treble crochet of the cross treble crochet stitch behind the first one and into that skipped stitch. Make sure that you're not working into any of the stitches that are already worked into. The stitches do kind of get pulled over to the side, so just make sure you're working into um, open stitches only. So just repeat the cross treble crochet stitch all the way across until only one stitch remains. And then we're gonna work one treble crochet into the last stitch.
So I only have three stitches left, so I'm going to work one more crossed treble crochet stitch. And then into the very last stitch, I'm going to work one treble crochet. So there we have row two. At the end of row two, your stitch count is going to remain the same as our row one. And now we're going to just keep building the length to our vest and repeat row two. I'm gonna to go to row 18, but this is the point where you can customize your length. So you just need to repeat row two as many times as you want. And that point is going to hit your mid back. So keep working as many rows as you'd like until um, the top reaches your mid back and you have the length that you'd like. I'm gonna work 18 rows and that's gonna be roughly um, mid thigh length. That greatly depends on how tall you are though. So feel free to work more or less rows to get whatever length you want. And we're just gonna repeat row two. And then once we hit our mid back, we're gonna start working some decrease stitches um, to bring the rest of it up to our neck. So just repeat row two as many times as you want to get your length. And then we'll move on to our decrease rounds. So now we're on to row three. So we are going to chain three and then turn our work. Then making sure to not work into the stitch directly under our chain three. We're going to skip the next stitch and then work our first treble crochet of our cross treble crochet stitch into the next stitch. Then working behind that treble crochet, we're gonna finish our cross treble crochet stitch by working a, another treble crochet into the skip stitch and behind the first treble crochet. And now we're just gonna repeat our cross treble crochets all the way across until one stitch remains. So I only have three stitches left, so I'm going to be working one more cross triple crochet stitch. And then I'll work one treble crochet into the last stitch. So the chain three at the end is our last stitch from this chain three from the previous row. So that counts as our last stitch. So we're just gonna work our treble crochet into the top of the chain three. So this is what we're looking like at the end of row three. Our stitch count is still the same of our um, first two previous rows. So now I'm just gonna keep repeating row two. I'm gonna go to the end of row 18. I'll catch up with you guys when I reach the end of row 18. So just keep repeating row two until you get your desired length and we'll catch back up and I'll show you how to work our decrease rows. So all you have to do now is chain three, turn, and just keep repeating row two until you get your desired length, and then we'll catch back up with each other. So I just finished row 18, and this is what mine is looking like now. So this is measuring from about the top, hits my mid back, and then goes all the way down to about mid thigh. And now we're gonna start working some decrease stitches, some decrease rows, and that's gonna go all the way up to our neck. So now we are on to row 19. So you need to chain three and turn. And for our decrease rows, we are gonna be decreasing by two stitches at the 
beginning and two stitches at the end. So each row is going to be decreasing by four stitches. And to decrease, we are just going to be skipping stitches. So to start the row, we are going to be skipping the first two unworked stitches. So of course, skip that stitch that's connected to our chain three, and then skip the next two stitches after that. So that's skipping um, the cross treble crochet stitch from um, the previous row. And then we'll be working our cross treble crochet stitch into the next two stitches. So we're skipping the first three unworked stitches working a treble crochet into the fourth stitch, and then finishing off our cross treble crochet stitch um, in the stitch behind that one. So there we de just decreased by two stitches and now we are going to cross treble crochet all the way across until we only have three stitches left and then we're gonna work another decrease. So just repeat the crossed treble crochet all the way across until we only have three stitches at the end. So I only have three stitches left. So I'm gonna skip the next two stitches to decrease by two. And then we're going to work one treble crochet into our last stitch. So one treble crochet into the top of that chain three from the previous row. So at the end of the row, we have decreased by a total of four stitches. Now we're gonna chain three in turn. And now on to the next row. So for row 20, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the last row. So we're gonna decrease by two stitches at the beginning and another two stitches at the end. So if you are making the extra small, small or medium size, we're gonna work row 20 and then you're gonna repeat that three more times for a total of 23 rows. If you are working the large or extra large, you're gonna repeat row 24 times. If you're working the 2X or 3X, you're going to repeat 25 more times. And if you're working the 4X or 5X, you are going to repeat uh, row 26 times for a total of 26 rows. So we're just going to keep working our decreases and decreasing by four stitches each row. So just keep repeating until you reach the end of your row. So I'm just coming up to the end of my last row. So again, I'm working the size small. So I worked a total of 23 rows. If you work the large and extra large, you should have a total of 24 rows. 2X and 3X should have a total of 25 rows and 4X and 5X should have a total of 26 rows. So you can see how we just kind of decreased up at the top a little bit. So now that we're done, I'm going to chain one and tie off my yarn. I'm gonna leave about a six inch long tail, just long enough so that you can weave it in. And at this point, you can weave in all of your ends for our back panel, and then we're gonna move on to our front panel. So this is what my back panel is looking like. So I'm gonna weave in my ends and then move on to our front panels. 
So we're now on to our front panel. So we're going to be making two identical front panels. I'm going to go through the instructions with you for the first one. And then when you're ready to make the second one, you can just come back here and repeat the instructions. So I'll leave a timestamp down below for when we start this. So you know exactly where to come back to when you're ready to make your second panel. So each panel is half the size of our back panel. So for my back panel, I um, made my foundation single crochet um, row 36 stitches. So now for my front panel, I'm going to make it 18 stitches. So that's half of the back panel size. So for row one, work your foundation single crochet row, just like we did for the back panel. It's just going to be half the size. So I'm gonna make mine 18. So I'm done my foundation single crochet row, and this is what it's looking like. Now on to row two, we're gonna chain three and turn. And just like our back panel, we are going to repeat row two. So make sure that if you decided to change the length of yours at all, just to work the same amount of rows um, for the row to repeat as you did for your back panel. You want to make sure that they match. So if you change the length of yours, just make sure that you work the same amount of rows you did for your back panel. But we're going to work the same thing we did for our back panel. So we're going to be working our cross treble crochet stitches all the way across until one stitch remains and then working a treble crochet into the very last stitch. So just like before, do not work into that stitch directly under our chain three since that belongs to our chain three. Then we're going to skip the next unworked stitch and then work our first treble crochet into that next stitch. And then working our next treble crochet in the stitch behind. And there's our first cross treble crochet stitch of the row. So we're just going to repeat that all the way across until we only have one stitch left. And then we're going to work one treble crochet into the last stitch. So I just have one stitch left, so I'm going to work one treble crochet into that very last stitch. And there we have row two. So just like our back panel, we're just going to repeat row two all the way up. I'm going to be stopping at the end of row 18, but just make sure that you work the same amount of rows that you did for your back panel. So I'm going to chain three and turn. And then just keep repeating row two all the way up to row 18 or until you meet the same spot that you did for your back panel. So just keep repeating and I'm going to catch up with you guys when I reach the end of row 18. So I just reached the end of row 18 and this is what mine is looking like now. So for the next three rows, so rows 19, 20, and 21, all of the sizes are going to be worked the same. We are going to uh, be decreasing by four stitches um, in each of the next three rows. So just like we did on our back panel. So we are going to start with row 19. We are going to chain three and turn. So just like our decrease rows from the back panel, we are going to decrease by two stitches at the beginning of the row and then decrease by two at the end of the row. So make sure that you're not working into that stitch directly below our chain three. And then we're going to skip the next two stitches and then start our cross treble crochet into the next two stitches, repeat our cross 
treble crochet all the way across until three stitches remain. Skip the next two stitches and then work our very last treble crochet into the last stitch. So I only have three stitches left, so I'm going to skip the next two stitches and then work my last treble crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row. So just work one treble crochet into that last stitch. So at the end of row 19, we have decreased by four stitches. Moving on to row 20, we're gonna chain three and turn. And we're just gonna repeat what we did for row 19 two more times. So we're gonna decrease by four for this row and then by another four for the next row. And just repeat what we did for row 19 for rows 20 and 21. So I'm gonna continue on and I'm gonna catch up with you guys at the end of row 21. So I just reached the end of row 21 and before we move on, I'm going to stop here because for our sizes small and or extra small and small, we're going to start going straight up and building our straps. But for all of the other sizes, we still need to make some more decrease rows. So instead of putting all of the different rows and sizes up on the screen um, over the video, I'm going to stop here and add in this photo. So if you're making the sizes extra small or small, you can continue on with the video and we're going to start building up our straps. But all of the other sizes, they need to have some more decrease rows worked before we get to that point. So after you work all the rows on the screen under your size, you can carry on with the video and we'll start building our straps. So if you are making the sizes medium, 2x or 5x, you'll notice that there is a row in each of those sizes that is a little bit different than the rest. For those rows, we are only decreasing by two stitches instead of four. So that's just to get our um, the width of our straps a nice size. If we would have decreased by four there, our straps would be too narrow. And if we wouldn't have decreased at all, they'd be too wide. So if you notice that those ones just have a decrease of two, that's meant to be like that. Um, for any of the sizes though, if you find that the straps are too narrow for you you don't have to work as many decrease stitches or decrease rows and if you find that the straps are not narrow enough or too wide you can work more decrease rows so at the end we're just going to be working a few rows that go straight up so with those rows you can add decreases or not to make the straps the length that you or the width that you want um, one thing to keep in mind though is you just want to work the exact same amount of rows um, for your front panels that you did for your back panel so that they are even so you can work um, more or less decreased rows just make sure that the total row count at the end is the same for the front panels and for the back panels so i hope i didn't make that too confusing <laughs> if you're making the sizes medium or larger then just follow along with the instructions on the screen and then we'll move on to the video to finish off our straps So we're now at the point where we're, we're gonna build our straps straight up. So we are going to work our cross treble crochet stitch all the way across until one stitch remains. And then we're gonna work one treble crochet into the last stitch. So for this row, if you're working the extra small, small, large, XL, 2X, or 3X sizes, we are gonna work this row two times. If you're making the size medium, you're only going to work this row once. And if you are making the 4X or the 5X, you are going to repeat this row for a total of three times. So 
So when you're done working all of your rows, all of the sizes are gonna look a little bit different at this point, but I wrote up in the top corner how many total rows you should have. If you changed up your row count at all, then just make sure your front panels have the same amount of rows as your back panel. So now we can tie off our yarn, leave a strand that's about 10 inches long so that we can use it to sew up at the end. And then we're gonna move on to our second front panel. And when you're done both panels, then we're going to assemble it all. So now I have uh, both my front panels done. So I have weaved in the ends on the bottom, but then I left those uh, longer strands at the top because we're gonna use those to sew our shoulder straps to our back panel. And then we're also gonna be seaming up the sides of our vest. So we are gonna start with the top straps. So if you wanna grab your back panel and we're gonna start with one of the straps, we'll seam together the top shoulder strap to the back panel. So I'm going to sew the pieces together with the right sides facing each other and then the wrong sides facing out. So to tell what the right side is and the wrong side is of your piece, if you look at your row one, so where we worked our foundation single crochet row, that we worked on the right side. So I worked from uh, right to left here. So this is my right side and all the pieces you want your right sides facing out. It really doesn't matter. Um, you just want them all facing the same way. So if you like the look of the other side better, then you can flip it around. But you want especially the front panels um, to be on the same side so that they look the same. So I am gonna be sewing this inside out and then when we're all done, we'll flip it the right way out. So you want the right sides facing each other and then the wrong sides facing out. And we're just going to line up our the top of our back panel and the front panel um, all the way to the edge. So we want to work that first stitch to the first stitch of our back panel. And then there's going to be a gap in the middle. And then we'll work the other strap on the other edge. So if you grab your yarn needle, we are going to be whip stitching these together. There's so many different um, seaming forms that you can use. Um, I like using the whip stitch, but if you have a different preferred method of seaming, feel free to use whatever you'd like. But I'm going to be using the whip stitch. So make sure that you're working into the same stitches on the front panel that you are on the back panel so that it's all nice and even. So I'm going to begin by working into the chain instead of the stitch. If you work straight into that very first stitch, then there's going to be a gap on the edge of the panels there. So I'm going to start off by working into the chain of the front panel and then working into the chain of the back panel. And that's just going to form a nice straight line um, from one panel to the next um, when it's sitting on our shoulders. So just work straight into the chain for the first go around. So insert your hook from front to back. And then working into the first stitch, again, we're gonna work front to back, working through both stitches. So we're working into four loops right now. And we're just gonna repeat this across. So you're always working from front to back and then bringing the yarn over and working into the next stitch. And just make sure you're working um, into the corresponding stitches on the front panel and the back panel. Something to keep in mind while you're working your whip stitch is not to pull on it too tight because you don't want to cinch the um, shoulder seam together. So try and keep it kind of loose, not so loose, but just don't pull it too tight. So we're going to work all the way across until we reach the end of our front panel. So you can see how that's a nice straight line on the edge there because we worked into the chain. Now that we reach the end, we're just going to secure this with a few knots. And then you can tie off your yarn and weave in your end and then move on to the other panel.
So we're just going to repeat the same thing for the other panel. So lining up the edges together. And then for this side, we're going to be working from the inside outside because that's where our tail end is there. So we are going to be working from the inside outside, working all the way across. And then when you reach the end, uh, make sure that you work into that chain three. So just make sure that you line up the stitches and work into the corresponding stitches on both panels all the way across. Then secure it with a few knots and then weave in your end. Once your shoulder seams are all done, we can move on to seaming up our sides. So we're gonna seam from the bottom up. So you're gonna to need to cut off uh, some new strands of yarn for these. So I did mine about double the length of my vest. You wanna make sure that you have enough yarn to go from the bottom um, to under the armpit. So I did about double the length of the entire vest. So using your yarn needle, we are just going to attach our new strand of yarn. So instead of attaching at row one, I'm gonna attach mine at row four, and that's gonna create a split between the two panels on the bottom, and that just helps fit a little bit more comfortably and not so snug at the bottom. Um, if you don't wanna split at all though, you can attach your yarn at the very first row, or if you want a larger split, you can um, attach your yarn at one of the higher rows. It's really up to you and what your personal preference is but I'm going to attach mine at row four so just at the base of row four and we're going to secure that with a knot make sure to leave a few inches at the end though so that you can weave that tail end in and then just like our shoulder seams we are going to whip stitch all the way up so we're going to whip stitch both um, panels together, making sure that you're working in corresponding stitches. And we're just going to be working on um, the edges of the stitches or the chain three. And just make sure that you're working into the corresponding rows on the bottom panel. And then you can work up as far as you'd like. You want to make sure that you leave a large enough armhole that your arm can comfortably fit in it. You can even make it extra large so that it's quite roomy. I worked up until row 16 and that left a few inches under my armpit so my arm could fit comfortably in it but it wasn't too loose. So just work up as high up as you'd like. Just be sure that when you work the other side that you work up into the same spot. So I'm gonna work up until row 16, but feel free to work up to whatever row you want. Just make sure that you leave a large enough hole that your arm can comfortably fit through it. So when you reach row 16 or wherever you want to stop seaming, you can secure with a few knots and weave in your ends. And then we're just going to repeat the same thing on the other side, making sure that you start and stop at the same point that you did with the first panel on the second panel so that they line up. So just finish weaving in the end on this side and then go repeat on the other side and then we're almost done. So 
So now I have uh, both of my panels seamed onto the back. So when you're all done, you can flip it so your vest is the right side out. Be sure at this point that all of your ends are weaved in nicely. And oh, there we have our Crossroads vest. Thank you so much for following along. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can find this pattern and many more free patterns on my blog, whoshomemade.com. You can also find the ad-free, easy-to-print PDF version of this pattern in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to tag me in your photos so I can see your finished creations. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.